Welcome, welcome, welcome. So this is how we're going to start the season. Kind of like how we ended the season last year. Not good, not good. So the Mets lose yesterday. A one-hit performance. They lose 3-1. to one. All right. That's fine. They lose the first game of the year. I'm waiting this game. I didn't even do a video yesterday because I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see how the team responds. How did the New York Mets, how are we going to play today? How do we respond? Especially what happened last night in the eighth inning with Reese Hoskins potentially almost majorly injuring Jeff McNeil. Whether the slide legal or not, I mean, you could potentially really hurt a guy, right? So it was deemed that the slide, slide was legal. I was hoping, you know what? Let's use this to motivate this team. Let's jumpstart this season and let's start things off. Let's mesh as a unit and come out on a, as a house of fire tonight, today, and score some runs and take it to the Brewers. That is how you pay the other team back. You don't complain. You beat the team on the field, right? So how do we come out today, right? So Reese Hoskins, off, right, right off the bat, right off the bat, I, I, I obviously had a fabulous performance, dominant performance, smacks us in the face. I mean, Jeff McNeil, he had he had um his opportunities in the first inning. You know, he didn't he didn't come through. You, you know, it's just unbelievable. It, it is just really unbelievable. You know, this team was kind of like marketed. We're gonna be. Pitch it, you know, we're gonna pitch well and we're gonna play defense. Thus far, I know it's only been two games. We we've done we haven't done that. And on a positive note, I want to start off positively. This was the team we're playing against the Brewers. I'm not saying they're the best, but they look like a decent bunch. You know, Jackson Churio, it looks like he's gonna be a young upcoming superstar. It looks like the Brewers could play defense, they could pitch. Stearns built that team, all right? So Stearns built that team. Stearns is going to need a little time building our team because we're not there yet. And Luis Severino, unbelievable, unbelievable. What did he give up? 12 hits today, and it looked like he was still tipping pitches. I don't know how many fastballs he threw, but it looked like it was one fastball after the no another, and they were just taking good swings on, on Severino. I mean, this was a game I felt like we could have won. We had an opportunity to win. Um, you know, it, it just seems like Mendoza, a rookie manager, I, I know he's got to get his feet wet, but it seems to me he's trying to really appease the players because there's no way Luis Severino should have still been in the game, you know, going into the fifth inning or however long he was pitching. It was way too much. 12 hits and six earned runs? Come on, our offense literally had one hit yesterday, and and you're not you're not taking this guy out. So I I, I mean I, I, there were just so many negatives this game, so many damn negatives. I mean right off the bat, Zach Short, you know, uh, you know it's not it wasn't an error, but he misplayed a ball. Harrison Bader, a supposed Gold Glove center fielder, there were two or three balls that I felt he should have caught as a Gold Glover, and it landed in front of him. Um, Pete Alonso, a ball down, I think it was in the fifth inning. He stopped the ball from being a double, but it went off his wrist. I mean, if we're marketing at marketed as a defensive team, we have to make these plays. We have to pitch and we have to play defense. Unfortunately, right now, I expected yesterday. I wasn't ex upset because I expect our offense not to be there yet. We know that we have an issue. We have J.D. Martinez getting ready. He's a big hole. It's a big hole right now. In the middle of the lineup, we have that we're going to be able to fill. In the meantime, yes, Jeff McDeal was the cleanup hitter yesterday. Uh, Taylor was the cleanup hitter today. And I wasn't crazy about that lineup. You know, I think the way the lineup was situated was hurtful. If it was situated in a different way, we might have had more opportunity to put more runs on the board. Um, did the Mets deserve to win the game today? Hell no. We didn't deserve to win the game. Could we have won the game? Yes, we had opportunities. But as we know, the whole game, the whole storyline 
revolves around how the Mets went about treating or pitching to Mr. Reese Hoskins. And I, 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 I gotta get, I gotta get to this because this is probably, um, besides Severino, the biggest thing. Because I look at the season going forward, I want a mentally tough team. You have to be mentally tough to go, go through the season, go through the playoffs, and win a World Series. Is the team mentally tough right now? No, we are not mentally tough. You know, Reese Hoskins came from the Phillies. He, you know, maybe, you know, obviously he probably knows what ball is, you know, the Mets, what gets under our skin. We cannot be a team that can be easily impacted on the field. Jeff McNeil, I know, okay, it, it's really, it hurts when a guy literally tries to take out your legs. It's, it's really hurts, but you have to move to the next play. Um, you know, you have to move to the next play. I do like when teammates stick up for teammates. Like Johan Ramirez, I tip my cat to him. You know, do I want him to injure a player? No, but throwing behind a guy, you send a damn message. And you have to send a damn message. Our guy, Pete Alonzo, was hit so many times last year. He was hit again today. He wasn't really, it wasn't really a big impact hit. But you really got to send a message that this will not be tolerated you can't take out a players on the field because your best player will be hit my if i if i you know was a pitcher or or manager i would have hit yelich and i would have tried to hit reese hoskins because you have to really send a message that this will not be tolerated your our team has to be mentally tough going forward right now we are not and this is where i'm i'm saying there right now is a leadership gap we don't have leadership right now. Mendoza is a young rookie manager, so he's not the proper leader. He's not a good leader at this moment. I'm hoping a guy like J.D. Martinez, when he comes in, I'm hoping that he could fill the leadership gap because there is a huge leadership gap. This was a game, despite us not deserving to win, we should have won. We should have won this game. We really should have won this game. That that's really the the bottom line. All right, what's up, everyone? Daniel, how's it going? Uh, Hobby Landreth, uh, yeah, only 160 more games to go. What do you know? We got a lot. Of, we, you know what? We got a lot of time to turn this around, but we just got to do a lot better. We got to do a lot better. Tim, what's going on? Hopefully, all is well. I know it was a struggle watching the game today. Um, you know, I, my my emotions were going. Every which way during the during the game. At the end of the game, I gotta say we did have some positives. We did. Beatty, the th a three run homer. Alvarez looks like he's gonna be a beast this year. Obviously, Alonzo hit a home run, so there were positives. The bats, I'm not really worried about. The bats, we will eventually. Um, I think our offense will be fine. It is just the fact right now, our pitching and our defense and Severino. And I gotta say this. If he's going to continue to pitch like this, uh, you know, the, the career might 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 not be too long uh, because he looked darn easy to hit. The pitches were right over the plate, and I know he's still throwing 96, 97, 98, but it looks so damn easy for those um for those players to put the bat on the ball. So I'm really hoping for Luis Severino's sake that he is able to, to really um, rectify this issue. Because if you really think about it, besides Luis Severino giving up six runs, they only scored, uh, the Brewers only scored one additional run. So the bullpen did well. Um, so that, that's, a, that's another positive. It, it really is. So, okay. So where do we really kind of go from here? Um, I think that, Martinez is going to really have to be the guy that really the Mets kind of look to because I'm looking really up and down that lineup and I'm looking in the bench and I'm kind of looking to see who is the leader, who is the leader, who's going to take this team because this Reese Hoskins situation, um, it's not going to go away. It's going to be referred through throughout the rest of the season. And I, and I kind of think that other teams are going to try to test the Mets. They're trying to test the Mets. So 
the fact that Johan Ramirez responded, I think, is going to uh, help out. But I, I think we're going to be continue to be tested. Um, and in situations where we're tested, we have to respond. We have to respond. Um, all right. So we're going to see that. Hey, Robbie, what's up? Same old, same old. Boneheads. Rather than throwing at a hated batter, they should win baseball games. Yeah, I, I, at the end of the day, it's got to be about putting your your best foot forward. Um, but I, I think, you know, mental toughness is, you know, the teams that win. The teams that win. You, you know, the Phillies. Reese Hoskins obviously was with the Phillies. And, you know, they were a team that always seemed to go far in the playoff. They are a team that we seem to go far. When we made the playoffs a couple of years ago in 2000, was 2022, we wilted. We wilted. That's really the thing I, I, I worry about. I think it's the thing that Stearns is going to evaluate with this team. Do we have the team right now, the players that come through in the clutch? Are, are, are we going to have guys who get better as the year goes on? I do think that we do have some great players, obviously. We have, you know, obviously the guys are Alonzo Alvarez, Lindor. They, they're going to play. But how are the other teammates going to mesh? How are the other teammates going to gel? Are we going to be able to play better defense? Because, you know, the defense, like I said today, was, was abysmal. Hey, G Okay, he was rough last year. You know, it's really funny because if you guys listen to the pregame show, everybody was talking about how Severino this year might be the surprise like signing, how he might be the guy that really could be the ace of the rotation. And I circled before the um the game started. I'm like, okay, that's going to be one of the questions. One of the questions this game is, is Luis Severino going to step up and does he have ace potential? So, I mean, the only question he kind of answered, or the only question that I have, is does he have enough talent to remain in the in the um, starting rotation? So, I mean, I know he's going to get a couple more starts, but it's got to get a world better for Luis Severino because he went from potentially being an ace to, like I said, potentially being in the starting rotation. So we got to see a lot more from Mr. Luis Severino. And, and let me say something about Reese Hoskins. Reese Hoskins is a guy, you know, honestly, he's a guy that I'm looking at in the other dugout. I'm like, that's a guy the Mets need. You know, he's a he's the type of player that if you're playing against him, you hate him. If he's playing on your team, you love him. But he's a guy you need. You need that type of fire, that type of energy in your dugout. I mean, when I was looking for the fire and the energy on the field today, it was absent. There was no fire. There was no energy I mean, you know, Johan Ramirez is probably the only guy he throws behind. Um, I forgot who he throws behind. And then he walks towards the batter. I don't, you know, I mean, it is what it is. But he was probably the only guy that, you know, really showed that extra, you know, energy. And I'm not saying to hit the guy, but I, I like the, I do like guys who defend their players. Yeah, uh, this is this is a great point. What is what is my opinion on the puzzling utilization of the cleanup spot in the lineup? Now, I think that this this is analytics gone wild, right? This is analytics gone wild. Now, the good thing about this is when McNeil came back, what was it a week and a half, two weeks ago, and they put McNeil in the um, cleanup spot? I said to myself, I mean, this is horrible. We absolutely need extra help. And then we signed J.D. Martinez like the next day or so. There is a huge, no doubt about it, gap behind Mr. Pete Alonso. I don't think that we have anybody, maybe besides Francisco Alvarez right now, that can possibly step up in that position if it's not Pete. Tyrone Taylor, 
I don't get it. I, I, I really don't get it. It's like they're trying to, to tailor, you know, I, the thing I get, you know, it seems like they're trying to suck up or motivate certain people. Like if they think the Taylor bats in the cleanup spot, is that going to make him play better? Or I, I just don't get it. There's no reason why Taylor, he's like a number seven, eight or nine guy. That's where he deserves to be in the lineup. This lineup was, in my opinion, was one of the reasons why we lost. Why we lost. I wouldn't put Alvarez, Tyron Taylor a couple spots in the lineup ahead of Alvarez. I mean, the way they used to do lineups, you know, years ago or, you know, the analytics lineup, I just don't get. It's completely puzzling. There's really no answer that I could think to this other than they're just going off of analytics. And it's not really making sense to me because this is one of the biggest reasons why I feel that we didn't have a chance in this game. Hey, what's up, Explosive? Here's the thing, and I was saying this to myself. I actually wrote a note note about this. I, I fully feel if we had bucked these two games, I feel that we would have had a shot to win. I, you know, I, I didn't like some of the things Mendoza said. Mendoza said in game one that he didn't want to pinch hit for uh, Harrison Bader late in the game because it's early in the season and that Harrison Bader is his starting center fielder. So you're telling me you're gonna take, a, you're not gonna pinch hit for a guy who you think is a better hitter in that position because you want to make Harrison Bader happy? I don't care when it is in your season when you have a chance to win or you have a chance to score, you seize that opportunity. And I think he used the same mentality today. Um, you know, Severino should have been pulled. He didn't have it. He didn't have it. Why was he going? Why was he still pitching in the fifth inning? I don't get it. I don't get it. We had hit a lucky fourth inning. You know, nobody scored. But there was no way that he, you know, he should have even been allowed to give up six runs and 12 hits. I mean, you know, and, and that's another thing where I feel like, oh, it's early in the season. Let the guy go. Let the guy pitch. You know, you got to, you know, it's very important. Momentum is also very important. These things like the Reese Hoskins situation, these things lead toward negative momentum or positive momentum. I would like positive momentum, not negative momentum. Yes, at the end of the game, we kind of came close. Um, Pete Alonzo, you know, great. He hit a home run. Beatty hit a three-run homer. And it shouldn't have been that close, but we had a chance to win. But we made too many mistakes this game. We played horrible defense. We had bad management. management. We had bad pitching. We did bad in every single aspect of baseball today. And it was such an easy way to lose because we didn't do anything right. The only, you know, Francisco Alvarez was this, the shining star of this game. Thank God for Francisco Alvarez because we shouldn't have been in this game. No, absolutely. I mean, honestly, you know, you need somebody to blame. Last year, it was easy to blame Buck. It was easy to blame Vogelbach. Those guys, Vogelbach did, had horrible numbers. But there were other players who did horrible. There were other guys who underperformed. And, you know, he was just an easy target to blame. I mean, he's not a guy I'd want on this team. But it's more than just two guys. It's more of the culture right now. The culture is not good. The dynamic is not good. I'm hoping that Stearns is able to analyze and see what is going wrong and make changes quickly because this can steamroll. This can steamroll just like it did last year in May and June. So I'm just hoping right now, okay, it's only two games. Nip it in the bud right now. Um, you know, we have we have next day's starting pitcher is a different starting pitcher. So we could easily have different results. Uh, we had a great offensive finish to the game. So I would try to take that momentum and, and move it forward. But we have to change things quickly. I don't like the way Mendoza right now is approaching the game. I, I, you know, he, he seems like a really – he is a rookie manager. But I, I, I'm hoping that he has a lot more bench help.
No, it, it's it's really disappointing because, you know, I was under the impression that at the very least we would have good defense. We would have good defense. So, you know, that's, that's why I'm like extra, extra disappointed. And I'm watching the game. I'm watching the game with my wife and, you know, we're extremely, you know, extremely disappointed that just at the we can't even do the the very minimum to to help the pitcher out who's struggling mightily in Luis Severino. And I'm really going to go back to this. Um, in the first inning, it felt like, you know, we lost it in the first inning. Obviously, in the t um, top of the first inning, you have Hoskins with a, you know, he had a he had a double, two RBIs. And then I'm just hoping we, again, we respond. I, I keep looking. How the hell are we going to respond? And then we, uh, McNeil comes up, bases loaded, two outs. You know, and, and 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 he hits a he makes good contact, but he's not a strong guy, and he hits a deep drive to center field, and the inning is over. And just like that, uh, I believe we were down like three one or two nothing. It just it just had such a bad really vibe, and then the game just went downhill from there. And in baseball, it's all about good feelings. It's all about good feelings. Right now. There's a lot of bad feelings going on around the Mets. But the good thing is, the good thing is, is it's very easy to turn this around. It's extremely easy to turn this around. Um, that's why I'm hoping that tomorrow we fix this cleanup situation because Tyrone Taylor should not be batting cleanup. I really wouldn't be surprised uh, if Marte is batting second in the lineup and they put Alonzo at cleanup. Um, Alvarez maybe back him fifth or sixth, but the whole lineup really kind of has to be restructured because it it's it's not flowing right now. TP Joseph, I think Hoskins expected the retaliation. Don't throw at the head, though. Bad karma. You know, it's 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 really it's it's funny. Um, I don't think Ramirez was trying to throw at the head. I think he was trying to throw behind him. I think he was trying to throw behind him or at him, right? So when you throw at the the back, or you know, it, it was it was probably a little too high. But at that point. It was like so far behind him. I don't even think he was really concerned about hitting him. So he wasn't really thinking about the location height wise. But Hoskins, if you're worried about getting thrown at, be a little more careful when you slide. If you're going to slide literally all the way past the bag and, and it was such a late slide, you know, it, it was obviously, you know, evident that the guy was trying to slide into McNeil. It, it, it was just blatantly obvious. I mean, literally, he's two, he's three, four feet from the bag, and he starts to slide. Yes, by the letter of the law, if he hangs on with his nails or his, his fingertip, it's still a legal slide, which really makes no sense because he's it seemed like he was aiming for McNeil. So I, I understand why McNeil is upset. And, and like I said, Hoskins, in my opinion, doesn't really have a right to be upset because if you – Go for a man's livelihood, you expect, you have to expect to be retaliated against. Now, Hoskins, to, to his credit, he responded in a good way. He responded by being a positive, you know, he had a positive performance for his team, and he completely dominated. He completely dominated. The way the Mets handled Hoskins in the beginning of the um, um, game was not great. And the way they responded to the whole Hoskins problem the, the 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 day before was just horrible horrible
Now, another thing, in terms of the Reese Hoskins situation, Johan Ramirez got ejected for not hitting Reese Hoskins, for throwing a bat or, uh, behind him, got ejected. He didn't have an opportunity to be warned. So I'm not sure how we feel about this. I know there was probably um, a lot of chatter going on with the umps, you know, about, hey, do we think it was intentional? And, you know, they came to the conclusion that it was intentional. So that's why he was thrown out without a warning. Usually in that situation, you're supposed to warn the guys. They're supposed to get a warning. But he was thrown out without a warning. My feeling on that is, honestly, if you're going to go the letter of the law with the Reese Hoskins slide the night before, I don't understand why Johan Ramirez was, was you know, now discretion was used. Discretion wasn't used the night before when Reese Hoskins was trying to take out um, McNeil. But discretion's used when, you know, Reese Hoskins wasn't even hit. So that was something that I'm like, hey, you know, you got to be consistent. If you're going to not use discretion the night before and you're going to base your decision on the letter of the law, then it's got to be the letter of the law. He didn't hit the guy. You give him a warning. You give him a warning. So that was something where I felt like the, the umps weren't as consistent in that respect. Yeah. Um, the ball slipped out of his hand. Every single time a batter gets hit, every single time Pete Alonso got hit last year, it slipped out of the uh, the pitcher's hand. So anytime a pitcher hits a batter, they're going to say it's an accident. They don't want to get fined. They don't want to have retaliation against them. It's always going to be an accident, even if it was intentional, even if it was intentional. So, I mean, I, I, just, I, I just didn't understand that part. I'm like, you know what? The ump's got to be more consistent. But on the flip side, what did the Mets do after Johan Ramirez went after Reese Hoskins? We made a little bit of a comeback. So this is what I talk about mental toughness. After we went after Reese Hoskins and after we displayed some type of mental toughness, we displayed an ability to stick up for our teammates. We made a bit of a comeback. Beatty, Beatty, obviously, you know, he needed that home run. And uh, Pete Alonzo, we scored four runs. I'm hoping we carry that momentum into tomorrow. But I do like the fact that, you know, you have that good, positive energy at the end of the game. You have a guy sticking up for his teammate. That I would consider a major, major positive. How, how do we all like um, Harrison Bader right now? Um, I mean, I, is it just me? I feel he should have caught a couple of these balls. A couple of these balls that landed right in front of him. You know, he's supposed to be this gold glover. I, I, you know, I, that's, I was a little frustrated, you know, watching Harrison Bader in the outfield. I think he left a little bit to be desired. I know on one of the plays early in the game, he dove head first and hit the tip of his glove. But I felt there were two or three other balls where I don't know if he didn't get a good jump on, but it just fell in front of him. And I expect a gold glover um, who moved Nemo to left field to make some of this plays. And, and Nemo, I know, he, he – he didn't hit. He didn't throw. He let a guy advance to third base, so he made a couple um, errors, you know, mind errors. But I, I expect a guy like Bader to make a couple of these plays. And, and and besides that, like Bader, he doesn't have much value outside of his glove. So if he's not keeping us in the game and he's not making these Gold Glove defensive plays in the outfield, you know. I don't see why he's going to be in the – I wouldn't be surprised if he's in the lineup tomorrow. 
Um, he, he's a guy that I really expect a lot more with, with the glove. I, you know, and, and I want to see how Mendoza approaches situations like this when guys make multiple errors or when guys make multiple plays. Does he sit them the next day? I really want to see how Mendoza treats this roster. I don't want Mendoza sucking up to these players. I want these players to earn their playing time. And, and, and I'm also going to be interested if pitchers like Luis Severino don't perform. Are we going to see Christian Scott soon? Because, you know, I think that has to happen, especially if Steve Cohen is telling New York Mets fans that we have eight guys, eight to ten guys, pitchers in the minor leagues who are ready to take guys' jobs. So I think the pressure really has to be on, but it's up to Carlos Mendoza to continually relay that message to the players like, hey, Luis, you know, things have to get substantially better or your job might be on the line. Yeah, Robbie, I, I remember. Um, yeah, I I had you down for 67 and a half wins because I know you said 65 to 70, but I averaged it off to 67 and a half. You know, they're, they're 0 2. So right now they are winless. So you you probably all the close closest. I think everybody else, the next closest prediction was like 81 wins. But you know, I'm hoping we don't go in that direction. According to David Stearns, he sold us a bill of goods that we're going to see good baseball this year. And honestly, I expect if players don't perform, I expect David Stearns to act quickly. You know, there still are guys on the free agent list who have, you know, value. Like, you know, like I mentioned, um, let me see if he's actually still available. I mean, I don't even know if he's still available, but I did a video about a Brandon Belt. Um, you know, I apologize if he got signed, but, you know, there are guys I don't know if Tommy Pham got signed, but there were guys that on the free agent list who have value. So if our guys aren't productive, you have bats on the free agent list. You have bats down in the minors. Um, you know, they said, you know, I know they mentioned on the broadcast today how Drew Gilbert and Acuna, you know, I think they both hit home runs, uh, hit home runs. So you you got alternative options. I'm not waiting. I, I'm not ready to just give crappy players, you know, um, you know, a, a, a bunch of runway. I don't want to give a bunch of runway to a Zach Short. I don't want to give a bunch of runway for uh, Brett Beatty to struggle the whole year. I want these guys to be productive. Now, I was very happy with Brett Beatty today, but, you know, that's just an example. I don't want a Luis Severino to struggle the whole year. There's no excuse to have these guys struggle um, for a prolonged period of time when you have guys in the minor league who are supposedly ready um, and they're ready to perform. So, you know, I want to see changes soon if, yeah, Joseph, yeah, if Vientos is producing in the minors and we have bad production in the majors, I expect changes. Always changes to get better. I, I don't care. If the change doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if you put pressure on people and you let them know that their job is on the line, Usually, if they're professionals, they're going to perform at the highest level. And if they're not performing at the highest level, then next guy up. And, Hobby, you bring up a good point. Um, Fam's relationship with Lindor apparently was poor. Okay. Now, Lindor. Lindor is – he's not the official captain – but he's more or less the unofficial captain. Lindor has to step up right now. We have a leadership gap. We need leaders on this team. Lindor is going to be here for eight years. That's why I'm, I'm highlighting Lindor. Nimmo's another guy we have signed to a long-term contract. These guys have to step up, and they have to be leaders through thick and thin. And these guys are going to be here if there is a rebuild. So these are guys right now I'm expecting them to step up. Um, I said this the other day. Lindor, he's, he was on a podcast with David Wright, and he said that, you know, his first couple of years that he struggles uh, because he thinks about fan booing. But Lindor especially, uh, and I don't really say this because I, I know, and I said this in a video, but um, I don't, I know fans deserve to boo, we have a right to boo. We pay a crap load of money. But 
they did it in Philly about not booing Turner. If this guy doesn't want us to boo, I would just experiment with not booing Lindor. See if he could get the Lindor in Cleveland. Because in Cleveland, Lindor was a beast. And it feels like we haven't even tapped Lindor's potential. You know, I, I love to see Lindor produce at a high level consistently. He is he is very productive. He's one of the best shortstops in baseball. But I do think there's a higher ceiling at, on Lindor. And if no booing helps a guy out mentally, I would like to try that. What's up, Christopher? Um, if he played like that with the Yankees, what makes anyone think he'll be different? I'm assuming you're talking about Luis Severino. Well, the thing about Luis Severino and our Ronnie, I think it was Ron Darling, he brought up a stat. So the, the, the thing is, obviously, everybody said that Luis Severino was tipping his pitches, right? So he was showing the batters some type of movement with his arm that indicated what pitch was coming last year in 2023. So thus, the hitters had a crazy average off the fastball. I think Ronnie mentioned that hitters batted 353 in 2023 off the fastball. And then in 2022, that same four-seam fastball, I think hitters batted around 180-something, around that. So it was a ridiculous change. So the, the thought process this year is if you correct a couple mechanical flaws with Larry Severino, that he would you know elevate his play and revert back to the form of late. You know, I mean, of a couple years ago, a couple years ago. So even though he did bad last year with the Yankees, they thought changing mechanics could help the guy out. This we start off first game, not good. <laughs> Another thing that I thought was interesting was when they asked everybody on um, yesterday night, how did they feel about the Hoskins situation? Um, how did they feel about it? I like, you know, Lindor. Lindor automatically said, obviously, McNeil, he has a right to be mad. Um, Pete Alonzo kind of like, you know, was, wasn't as uh, – it seemed like he didn't really stick up for McNeil as quickly. But then a reporter goes, oh, but Lindor said that McNeil had a right to get mad. Then Pete kind of came around. I'm looking for that because I want this team, obviously, to have camaraderie. If the more camaraderie the team has, obviously, I that's going to make a stronger uh, bond. And that's going to really help us out in the long run. All right. Um, yeah, guys, I'm going to, uh, this is going to be a really short show today. I got to go actually make dinner, but I just want to stop by, do a little quick live stream. I haven't been around the last couple of days, had a, a lot of I have work, I have a full-time job. So I had to do a couple of things there. Um, but I'm going to make, I'm going to make a video, probably going to make a video tomorrow. Uh, if you have any messages, send me a message, but I'm going to, I'm going to check out right now. Thank you so much for all the comments. You guys are the best. I really appreciate you. Um, like, subscribe. You know, you know all the good stuff. I apologize tonight wasn't that long, but have a great night. And I, I thank each and every one of you for listening. Have a great night.